6.45 a.m., two hours and 15 minutes before time zero. At time zero, a new type of atomic explosion, a plutonium bomb, will be detonated at Desert Rock, Nevada. These soldiers are to experience the plutonium explosion under simulated combat conditions. Sure. How could a thing like this happen? They've set off lots of these bombs before. Not a plutonium bomb they haven't. This is the first one. Sir, can't we leave? Can't we get out of here? No, Sergeant. You've got to wait until the chain reaction dampens or reaches a point of explosion. It could go off in a second, a minute, ten minutes, maybe not at all. Just have to wait it out. Can we smoke, sir? Sure. But keep hugging that trench wall closest to the bomb position. There won't be any warning when it goes. Colonel. Huh? Listen. That sounds like a plane. Control. There's a light civilian plane coming in at one nine zero degrees. Appears to be in trouble. Ground to pilot. Ground to pilot. This is control. Can you read me? Still coming in. Ground to pilot. You are flying over an atomic detonation area. You are flying over a restricted area. Change your heading 180 degrees. Losing altitude fast. He's going down. Was he killed? I can't. 
can't tell. He could be unconscious inside the plane. Colonel, that bomb could go off any second. Control, that pilot could be alive. What about the bomb? It's still activated, Colonel. Once the chain reaction has been triggered, there's nothing we can do to stop it. But there's a man in that plane. We're helpless, Colonel. Colonel, no! Another unit of blood, please. A unit of blood, please. <laughs> Nurse. How is he? Where have they got Colonel Manning that was in an accident? They got him over in surgery, there, sir. Brought him out yet? They don't hold much hope for him. It was quite a mess when they got to him. Couldn't even find the plane or the pilot he was trying to save. You know, I was there covering the test for National News Service. Never seen anything like it. I've seen plenty. Please. You a friend of his? His fiance. Gosh, I'm sorry. What a fool. Please, can I do something for you, get you something? How long have you known Colonel Manning? Maybe if you talked about him, it'd help. You said you were there when it happened. Was he conscious when they reached him? I mean, was there much pain? He's been in a coma since he got to the hospital. I don't think he knew anything when that blast hit him. It was terrible. You know, they had the whole thing on film. There were 18 cameras embedded in concrete to shoot every phase of the explosion. Third-degree burns on almost 100% of the body's surface, and the man still lives. Unbelievable. By all the rules, he should be dead. We were to be married tonight in Las Vegas. We met in the funniest way. Our cars locked bumpers at a busy intersection in Chicago. He was stationed nearby at Fort Sheridan. He got so mad. He still ribs me about my driving. Glenn is such a wonderful man. He doesn't deserve a break like this. Why did this have to happen to him? Things like this just happen. It doesn't have to be a reason. He must have protected his eyes with his arm. 
He apparently covered them when the blast hit. That's one bit of luck. Luck? This man's luck ran out long ago. You'll die of shock before morning, and if that doesn't do it, infection will. I'll be sure he gets penicillin and cortisone around the clock. Although I think it's useless. There's always a chance. What kind of chance do you give to a man who hasn't a square inch of skin left on his body? He's already lost enough body fluid to be fatal. Just have to wait. Keep the room temperature at 80 degrees. I'm on a constant check on his pulse, hour by hour. Right. Uh, will he be all right, doctor? Are you Carol? Your name was the only word he spoke. Is he? He's still alive. He will be all right. I don't know. I wish I could give you some hope. Yes, Doctor, and plasma continuously. Scissors, please. new skin. How's it possible? Yesterday, this was dead tissue. And today, there isn't even a scar. What do you make of it, Paul? When skin is burned to the degree that it was on this man's body, it just doesn't grow back. So what's the answer? I don't know. It's not burned. Why, well, he's going to be all right, isn't he? And since you played a major role in the development of the plutonium bomb, Mr. Kingman, we hope that you may be able to help us to understand 
or to learn how Colonel Glenn Manning survived the blast. I brought you the film taken during the explosion, but I don't see what can be learned from it, as far as your patient is concerned. The accident was unfortunate, very unfortunate. What more can be said? There are two answers that we're looking for. Now, the first is how Glenn Manning was able to survive the explosion. Chance. It just happened that conditions were such that he was afforded a certain amount of protection. What explanation would you give for the new skin that was grown on this man in a matter of hours? What possible connection could there be to the bomb? A man survives an explosion, a plutonium explosion. And then, for some reason or other, his skin heals more rapidly than usual. What is the mystery, gentlemen? Mr. Kingman, when 60 or 70 percent of a person's body is burned, he doesn't have much chance for survival. Now, if he should live, the skin that was destroyed does not grow back. It remains dead scar tissue. When a man suffers over a 95% body burn and less than a day later looks normal, I'd say that was a mystery. And you feel that the plutonium may have some unknown quality that is responsible? It's worth every effort to know. Now, I'll admit that you may be right. The plutonium possibly had nothing to do with it. There may be nothing more to this than a freak of nature. But if there is something to it, think of what it'll mean to medical science to have such a regenerative or healing power under its control. Shall we view the film? Like many of the atom tests, we built a model town to see how it reacted to the explosion. The protected cameras, such as this one, recorded the experiment. Watch this building when the heat of the explosion reaches it. There. Now the force of the blast. Here's another building. First burned, and then disintegrated. There's Manning. This was seconds before the explosion. The fact that Glenn Manning lived after the blast and that new skin completely replaced the burned dead tissue in a matter of hours leaves only one conclusion. Something out there is beyond the limits of our knowledge. Yes? I'm Lieutenant Klein, attached to security at the Nevada Testing Grounds. May I talk with you for a moment? Has Colonel Manning... Has something happened? No, at least not that I know of. However, as security officer attached to Colonel Manning, I've been sent to tell you that you won't be able to visit the Colonel at the hospital for a while. But why? Security reasons, ma'am. I wish I could tell you more, but, well, I really don't know anymore. I don't understand. What possible reason could there be to keep me from seeing him? Well, I was with the Colonel at the time of the accident, ma'am. I wish I could help you. I'm only carrying out orders. But he is getting well. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll have to wait until security is lifted. All right. Thank you, Lieutenant. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Excuse me, uh, could you tell me where they've taken Colonel Manning? I'm sorry, miss. I never heard of Colonel Manning. But you must have heard something about him. I'm sorry, miss. Uh, excuse me.
Excuse me. My name is Carol Forrest. I'm Colonel Glenn Manning's fiance. Yes. I was looking for Colonel Manning. There's no visiting until 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Miss Forrest. I know that. And I also know that Colonel Manning is no longer in his room on the second floor. Where have they taken him? There's no Colonel Manning listed here. There's another hospital near Barstow. Perhaps you've made a mistake. I haven't made a mistake. I know Colonel Manning was here, and I insist on being told what you've done with him. I'd like to speak to the head of the hospital, please. He'll be back the day after tomorrow, so if you'd care to return. Where can I find Dr. Lindstrom? Don't tell me you've never heard of him. Oh, you mean Dr. Lindstrom from Rochester. That's right. Well, he was only here for a few days, called in on a special case. Did he return to Rochester? We wouldn't have that information. Sorry. Yes, sir. Come in, please. Yes, sir. Excuse me. I'm afraid you can't go any farther, miss. This is government property. Is this the road to the hospital? Yes, ma'am. I've come to see Colonel Glenn Manning. I believe he's a patient here. Well, there are no patients here, ma'am. Not since the war ended. Please, I've come a long way to see him. Oh. Just a minute, I'll phone the sergeant. Sergeant will see you. Now you stay on this road about a quarter of a mile and you can't miss it. You'll find the sergeant just inside the main entrance. Oh, thank you. Dr. Lindstrom, Dr. Lindstrom, report to laboratory. Can I help you, miss? Uh, I'm looking for an army officer who I believe was transferred here. Oh, uh, what's his name, ma'am? Uh, Colonel Glenn Manning. Colonel Manning. Uh-uh. No Colonel Manning here, ma'am. Oh, I see. Thank you, Sergeant. I was told that he might be here. Obviously, the party was mistaken. Sorry, I couldn't help you, miss. Uh, the guard will let you out the gate. Thank you. Hated to disturb you, Paul, by what you ought to see him. Has he had his intravenous feeding? Yes. Well, how's his respiration? Rapid. I can't understand this. Give me a stethoscope, Eric. He's breathing much more rapidly now. Changes every hour. Never received. It's understandable. I wish he'd snap out of it. 
an unconscious since the accident. I'll keep the room temperature at 80 degrees. I want a constant check on these pulse hour by hour. Right. why we didn't let you in on Colonel Manning's condition, Miss Forrest. Primary being that Washington gave the strictest orders that he be isolated. Now, for obvious reasons, they ordered a security restriction over the whole affair. I want to help. Is there something I can do? We're doing everything that can be done, Miss Forrest. But what happened? What made him grow? Glenn Manning is growing from 8 to 10 feet a day. The moment, he's 18 feet tall. Tomorrow, he'll be 26 feet. The next day, 35, maybe 40. And the next day... But you've got to stop it. Miss Forrest, we're trying. Believe me, we're trying. Let me explain it to you. Now, as you probably already know, the body is like a factory. It's continually producing new cells to replace the older cells, damaged cells or destroyed cells. Now, this happens in all the different parts of the body. Bone cells grow new bone cells. Skin cells grow new skin cells and so on throughout the body. Now here, let me show you. This is an example of bone growth. Now the broken bone shown in this x-ray became the healed bone shown in this x-ray by means of bone cell growth. Now notice that the new cells join the broken bone together so that you no longer see any break. Now a cut, say in your hand, heals in the same way with new cells replacing the damaged ones. It is this delicately balanced process of new cells replacing dying cells or damaged cells that is causing the growth problem with Glenn. But how can this make his whole body grow? The process is out of balance. For some unknown reason, new cells are growing at an accelerated or speeded up rate, while at the same time, the old cells are refusing to die. This is what makes Glenn grow. That's what made the new skin. Then if you can stop this from happening... We can stop his growth. And if you can't... Then Glenn Manning will continue to grow until he dies. for you to volunteer. You should have waited until you were called. Honey, I'm in the reserves. They would have called me eventually, anyway. But it just isn't fair. You were just getting started. You've got your future to think about. I am thinking about it. Thinking about yours, too. Darling, we're going to get married just as soon as the thing's over. It can't last long. <laughs> Honey, will you please stop worrying? When you're safe at home, then I'll stop worrying. Yeah. You all 
right, Carter? Yeah, sure. That last one was close. How are the breaths? Oh, not so good. Look out of the gun! How soon will the tent arrive? It's being flown in from Circus Winter Quarters in Florida. Should be here any time now. Well, he's already outgrown his room, you know. Well, as soon as you get the tent up, we'll break out the wall and move him. Right. Dr. Lindstrom? The reason I sent for you was that Manning regained consciousness during the night. Now, at the moment, he's suffering from the shock of learning about his condition. He won't talk to anyone. Oh, please, may I see him? I know he'll talk to me. See him, by all means. You know, psychologically, you may do him a lot of good. I want you to move quietly and unemotionally. You know, at his size, he's capable of pulling these walls apart. His height was over 22 feet this morning. I understand. Won't you talk to me? They'll be able to help you. I know they will. The doctors are working night and day to find a cure for you, and they're very hopeful. Why, they're flying in Dr. Mayer from Sweden. He's one of the greatest specialists of cellular research in medicine. What else can I say to help you, Glenn? What sin could a man commit in a single lifetime to bring this upon himself?
Bud. What's with this Medar they called in? I thought the army hauled in its own stuff. Come on, move on. All food deliveries are made to the stock room behind the kitchen. You'll find it at the far side of the main building. Twenty-five sides of beef. Who's going to eat it all? They haven't had any patients out here since the war ended. You fellas must eat pretty well. We'll invite you to dinner so you can help us. Now move this truck out of here. And what's the tent for? Something's going on out here that's mighty funny. We're going to have a circus every Saturday. Oh, now, come on, General. Let me in on the big secret. I won't breathe it too so. All right. If I tell you, will you move this truck? Right. It's for him. For who? The giant. What giant? The 30-foot one we got living here. Sure you have. Now to swing away from the seamy side of the news, many people are asking what happened to Colonel Glenn Manning, the army officer who was exposed to the rays of the plutonium bomb at Desert Rock, Nevada, a few days ago. Eyewitnesses of the incident state that to all accounts he should have died in the blast. Is he alive or dead? What's all the mystery for, Washington? Here in Las Vegas, Nothing yet. Let's give him double the amount. Let's try it. mind if I tried something on my own? Mm, what is it? I'd like to attempt a practical application of the cellular theory we discussed yesterday. Fine. By the way, where's Manning? It's out with Carol. You know, he shouldn't be permitted to walk around. He should be confined. Confined? What, he weighed this morning? 2,987 pounds. Five hours, which should make him over 30 feet tall. You know, it's funny, Carol. I was sitting here like this on the hillside, away from people and things. It's very funny. It reminds me of that picnic that we took once. See, that was... You know, time has lost all perspective. It's been a lifetime since that explosion. Everything that happened before seems another world, another life. That was a wonderful time before. What'd you say, Carol? Before I became a monster? You see, I don't mind a bit. You shouldn't. I shouldn't what? Talk about it, think about it? Do you realize that every breath I take Every movement, everything reminds me of what happened. Even when I try to sleep at night, close my eyes, so I won't see people in the world getting smaller every minute. The beating of my heart keeps getting louder and louder, reminding me. I should never have lived through that blast. You're alive, Glenn, and as long as you are, there's always hope. You know what they wrote about me in the college yearbook? The man most likely to reach the top. <laughs> Everything.
Everything's going to be all right. I know it is. The doctors are working night and day to find a cure. They feel that if they can stop your growth, they may be able to bring you back to normal. You don't really believe that. They'll never find a cure for me. Are you all right? Shall I go for Dr. Lindstrom? I'm all right. I'm all right. I just don't want to grow anymore. I don't want to grow anymore! going so well, is it? Doesn't he have any relatives? There's no one. He's all alone except for me. Carol, do you mind if I spoke bluntly? It's no good for you to be here. But who has more right? Well, in this case, I feel the right can be wrong. At first, I thought it might do him good to have you near. And of course, the government insisted that you stay. However, I'm going to recommend the security be lifted in your case. How can you ask me to turn my back on the only person who's ever meant anything to me? Why, I've got to be here to try to help him get well. Suppose that he doesn't get well. Drive back to the laboratory. There's something I want to show you. new in the paper, Sergeant. It's about you, sir. Let's have it. Man lives through plutonium blast. <laughs> That's a great joke, isn't it, Sergeant? <laughs> they call this living. <laughs> you ask me what it feels like to be a freak. Please, sir, I... I'll tell you. This is how it feels to be so big you can stick your fist through a circus tent. Like a clown. <laughs> Who else but a clown would have an expandable sarong like this, you know? It's adjustable. I can grow to be a hundred feet tall, and I don't need a change of wardrobe. Army ingenuity. Sir, may I leave? Why? You want to go back to your quarters and tell your friends about the monster? 
about the circus freak? Well, that's right, Sergeant. I'm a circus freak. Have a tent, we'll travel. Why don't you make me up a sign saying, see the amazing colossal man? <laughs> that was it, wasn't it, Sergeant? You do think I'm a freak, don't you? But you want to know something? With me, it's different. I think you're the freak. I think you're the one that's different. I'm not growing. You're shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> If you understand the circumstances more thoroughly, you will realize why it would be better for you to leave. Now this is a step-by-step -step illustration of Glenn's circulatory system in relationship to his growth. Now this illustration represents Glenn shortly after the accident. And this one is of Glenn as of a few hours ago. Now if you look closely at each one, you will notice that all the parts are enlarging at the same ratio except for the heart. Now here. When it was of normal size, the heart measured approximately the size of the distance from his nose to his chin. However, at the size he is now, the heart measures the same as the distance from his lips to his chin. In other words, the heart has increased one half as much as the other parts of the body. Now, remember when I explained the other day why Glenn was growing? I said that all the parts of the body consisted of millions of tiny cells that were rapidly and uncontrollably multiplying. Yes. Well, today we've learned that this theory does not apply to Glenn's heart. It is growing, but at a much slower rate. Now, the reason for this is rather technical, Carol, but to give you a simplified layman's explanation, it might be explained that since the heart is made up of a single cell for all practical purposes, instead of millions of cells like the rest of the organs of the body, it's reacting in an entirely different manner to this unknown stimulus or force that's behind this whole thing. No wonder he's always complaining about those sharp pains in his chest. What does it mean? Simply this, Carol. Then unless we can find a way to stop Glenn's growth very soon, his heart won't be able to carry the load any longer. And he'll die. How soon? Matter of days. How will it happen? His mind will go first. And then his heart will literally explode. Why is this horrible thing happening? I've searched everywhere for the answer, and I can't find it. All night, I, I lie awake thinking, why? Why, why, why does it have to happen? Well, you're a doctor, tell me. I wish I knew, Carol. I wish I knew. I, uh, I've got to make my report to Washington. Anything yet? Nothing conclusive. Right. Hello, Colonel. How are you, Doctor? We don't have time to become discouraged, Eric. We've got to find an answer quickly. Did you tell Carol? Yeah. She still won't leave. Well, I can't say that I blame her, but she's got to go. We can't take any more chances. Any change in the new animals? None. Absolutely no change of any kind. 
I check their galvanic reflexes on the hour every hour. The results are the sum total of absolutely nothing. Paul, I don't think we've got a chance. The theory is just great, on paper. It just doesn't stand up under practical application. You know, Eric, it might be better if we concentrate the experiments with the guinea pigs and the rabbits in the lab. Since time is so important, we have the advantage of their short life cycle. Well, the small animals can't stand up to the high frequency stimulation. Let's continue the injections with the small animals and confine the high frequency experiments to these. All right. Seems logical. Everything seems logical. If you look at our giant. Seven dwarves? I heard you cry out in pain. I was worried about you. Tomorrow may be an important day, Glenn. Dr. Colt has been experimenting with some animals, a theory of some kind he's been working on. And he said he'll know the results by morning. How tall do you suppose I'll grow before death releases me from this curse? hundred feet? Maybe a thousand? Could be a mile. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can't you imagine that, Carol? <laughs> Please, Glenn, don't torture yourself. <laughs> I wouldn't actually have to worry too much about breathing till I got about three miles up. The oxygen starts to thin up up there. Glenn. I'm a lost cause, Carol. They're not going to find the answer tomorrow or any tomorrow. You just picked the wrong number. Go on, pick up your chips. Go on home. Do you think I could leave you alone at a time like this? You never did know when to quit, did you? Can you take a hint? I want you to get out and leave me alone. I don't want you around, do you hear? Say whatever you wish to me, Glenn, but please, please hold on until they try everything possible. There must be a cure for it. There must be. Suppose it stopped. So what? I stopped growing. What then? Can't you imagine what a wonderful life we'd had together? <laughs> Me up here and you down. What is it, Glenn? Please, is there anything I can do? Yes! Get out! Leave me alone! Manning's disappeared, Eric. We can't find him anywhere on the grounds. But you've got to find him. Well, Colonel Halleck, security officer for the area, is out canvassing the desert with his men. It's my fault. I had an argument with him last night. Well, they won't go far. Paul, I've got the answer. I've got the answer. The answer is in the bone marrow. The bone marrow. We were so close we couldn't see it. Yeah. Dr. Lang's work on radiation exposure. Sulfur hydro. Inject sulfur hydro compounds into the bone marrow. Exactly. The thing that fooled us was we were looking for some unknown quantity in the plutonium radiation, while all the time it was acting to a degree the same as a hydrogen exposure. The secret was in the degree of the exposure. Well, then injections of the sulfur hydro compound should correct the body's regenerative balance. 
Well, I can see where this would stop his growth, but... You do think you can save him? It may stop his growth, but it won't diminish his size. The stimulation of the hormone secretions in the pituitary or growth-controlling glands will take care of that. You know, it doesn't sound practical, Eric. I, I don't think it'll work. Here, take a look. That's amazing. It's hard to believe, but it worked. I used high-frequency stimulation in the pituitary gland, causing the hormone secretion to reverse the growth process. First, injections of the sulfahydryl compounds into the bone marrow. That will stop the growing. And then stimulate the pituitary gland to reduce its size. But do you think you'll be able to in inject him with a hypodermic needle this size? I've had an oversized needle constructed. As a matter of fact, the doctor, I, uh, I couldn't find Manning any place. My men covered an area of 10 square miles. But we can't lose him now. We just can't. Just when we have the problem licked. Colonel, can you get us a helicopter? We have two helicopters, but only one pilot. All right. We'll use them to find Manning. Eric, you go with the pilot, and I can fly the other one. Colonel, it's imperative that we find him as quickly as possible. We think we've found a cure, but only if we get to him in time. Helicopter William X-ray. Helicopter William X-ray. This is Charlie Dog. Come in. This is William X-ray. Go ahead. We are over Boulder Dam. Everything looks normal. We're heading towards Las Vegas. Now we'll keep trying in this direction. It's getting late, so if you don't find them within the hour, you turn back and we'll continue tomorrow. distance between our position here and the location where you spotted the dead cattle, marked by the pin, is only about 50 miles. Now, he certainly can travel faster than that. He's been gone over 15 hours. He's probably been moving back and forth in a nameless pattern. I'll never understand why someone hasn't reported seeing him. How tall would you guess he's grown to by now? 50. Maybe 55 feet. Sooner or later, someone's bound to see him. Maybe take a shot at him. Colonel, maybe we're making a mistake in not informing the civil authorities. No, I can't do that. You know the orders. We could use help in tracking him down. I'm not worried about finding him. As soon as it gets light, I'll show you some action. I just hope he lasts through the night without getting into trouble. <laughs> If anything comes in, no matter how trivial, if it's about the giant, call me. If I'm asleep, wake me. Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, Sergeant, place a call to the Nevada State Police. Ask them to report anything unusual. Uh, missing cattle, broken fences, anything out of the way. What will I give them for a reason, sir? Think of something. Anything. Yes, sir. Doctor, I want to ask you a question. 
and I'd like a straight answer. Well, yes. Do you consider Manning dangerous? If we can get to him, we can help him. You haven't answered my question. I truthfully don't know. Well, I want to make something clear to you, Doctor. I've ordered up two more companies of men to help with the search, and I don't intend to risk casualties. If, when they find him, he shows any signs of violence, we'll have to stop him. And I mean stop him cold. It's not a wild beast you're talking about. He's a human being. But a potentially dangerous one, Miss Forrest. We won't hurt him unless he gives us cause. But his mind is sick. There's no telling what he'll do or where he'll go. He's out there somewhere, and we'll find him. Not another drop, Al. Not another drop as long as I live, so help me. He should have been confined. A fence or something. Maybe chains. We had no business letting him run loose like we did. How were we to know? We should have known. The symptoms were there, Eric, in black and white. We were so engrossed in finding a cure, we failed to recognize the warnings. Any word yet? No, not a thing. If only we can find him before it's too late. Why did I have to argue with him? Now another one to take the blame. I'm going to bed before it's my turn. We're taking off quite early in the morning. Is the needle and medication all set? Since he left, but I'll double check. No. Carol, a few days ago I suggested that you leave. Now I'm going to insist that you leave. It's no longer safe for you. Glenn Manning is a sick man in mind as well as body. Dr. Lindstrom, I'm not leaving. I've already wired Washington for permission to lift security restrictions. Now, the restrictions will probably be unnecessary by morning anyway. Someone's bound to see him. You had no right to do a thing like that. Don't you have any heart? You're an intelligent girl, Carol. Can't you see the futility of the situation? There's nothing more that you can do to help him. Besides, if and when we do find him, it's very likely he won't even recognize you. Then you don't believe that you can save him. Possibly, if we can get to him in time. Well, I'm not leaving until I know. Doctor, Miss Forrest, we've had two more reports of slaughtered cattle. Was there anything else? He was seen by a couple of motorists. And Manning is about ten times the height and width of a normal man. And as closely as Dr. Lindstrom and Dr. Colder can estimate, Glenn Manning should weigh about 18,000 pounds. Now, I don't anticipate any trouble whatsoever in finding our giant. In fact, we possibly could have found him last night, after the two motorists reported seeing him. But since we don't know exactly what mental change may have taken place during Manning's continued growth, I thought it best to wait until daylight. Therefore, our greatest problem is not in finding him, but what to do with him after he's found. Dr. Lindstrom will brief you on that. Now, naturally, we're not certain that it'll work. But the success or failure of the treatment may very well depend on how soon we're able to administer it. Under Colonel Halleck's command, you men will be in charge of the search patrols. Now, as soon as he's found, Dr. Calder and I will fly to him in a helicopter and take over from there. Colonel. 
As you know, this is our position here. Slaughtered cattle have been found here, 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 and here. The two motorists reported seeing him at this point here on Highway 93. And from the way he's been zigzagging back and forth, we can assume that Manning is somewhere here in the southern tip of Nevada. And we're going to cover every inch of it until we find him. Now, here's the procedure of operation. Six observation planes were sent up from the Victorville Air Base and are now searching from the air. They will be in radio contact with me at all times. Captain Hamilton, you will divide your company into units of 25 men. And starting from our position here, you will fan them out in an arc of 180 degrees and head east. Captain Fraser, you will also divide your company into units of 25 men. Trucks will take them to the place where Highway 91 crosses the border of Nevada and Arizona. You will then fan them out in an arc of 180 degrees and head westward. I will accompany one of your units. Are there any questions? Sir? What do we do when we spot him? Each unit will be equipped with a radio. Now, when you see him, report to me immediately. I will relay the information to the helicopter of Dr. Lindstrom and Major Coulter, and they will rush to the spot to medically treat him. And now a word of warning. You are not to advance any closer to the giant than 50 feet. Your men will be well armed, but you are not to fire, except in the case of self-defense. Remember, stay away from him. The giant is potentially dangerous. All right, dismiss. Otherwise, we might have to make more than one shot. And so the Chamber of Commerce has decided to increase the annual advertising budget here in Las Vegas. Well, it looks like the FSOOE, that stands for Flying Saucer Observers of Earth, have a competitor in the Seeing Strange Things Department. And this time, it's right here in Nevada. Now, it seems that two motorists driving south on Highway 93 barely missed a collision with, now get this, a 60-foot giant. What have you got to top that one? Calling ground unit three. This is observation plane King Nancy. Over. Observation plane King Nancy. This is ground unit three. Go ahead. I see him, sir. I see the giant. He's just outside of Las Vegas and is moving toward the resort hotel section. Over. Ground Unit 3, Ground Unit 3, this is Helicopter William X-Ray. I heard the report, Colonel Halleck. We're changing our course. Should arrive in Las Vegas in about 14 minutes, off and clear. Observation plane King Nancy, this is ground unit three, Colonel Halleck speaking. Are you still flying over Las Vegas? Over. Roger. I can see the giant moving along the strip. Over. Land your plane at once and contact the local police. Tell him not to attack or fire on the giant unless he becomes violent. Tell him to keep away from him. We are north of Boulder Dam and should be in Las Vegas within 40 minutes. Off and clear.
seemed like a joke or a prank, but a few hours ago has now become a reality. A reality in a king-size package over 60 feet tall. Police Chief Benson has asked me to tell you to stay in your homes. Stay in your homes. The Army is rushing two doctors to Las Vegas by way of helicopter. They apparently know what to do with the giant. What I'd like to know is, where did he come from? How much further? We'll be in Las Vegas in about 30 minutes. Well, there's one thing we didn't give much thought to. Now, what's that? Just how much of a job it's going to be to give him this shot. Think he's going to stand there and let us do it? As I say, shoot him. Here comes the giant! and let him destroy property. excitement through our window. We can't see him. Look, from the petty cow there on the street, he must be... Wait a minute. Here he is, a 60-foot giant on the streets of Las Vegas. Look at the size of that man. heading toward Boulder Dam. We are nearing the Arizona side of Boulder Dam. We'll cut him off when he tries to cross. Over. He's just ahead of us, Colonel. We'll try to stop him before he reaches the dam. Right. Over and out.
setting down here. Hard. We have to penetrate the bone in the first injection. I doubt if we'll get a second chance. You ready? One, two, three. Look at it, bring it Put her down! 